Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Milpacost. Waddle Squash. Right at the current time, it's the 13th of Malachite 408, midsummer of our sixth year here. And things are really still going just swimmingly. No concerns to speak of. Of course, we do still have quite a few things to get done, as always around here. Now, right at this particular moment, we're just finishing up a break. We haven't had one in quite a while. And as such, we've had a bunch of pumpkins just kind of hanging out down around here, the Bent Limb Inn. There hasn't been any more trouble, thankfully, not after that last person came and was poking around for that book, remember. Though I am noticing there are a couple more people in here. Humans. Uh, armed humans. But they seem pretty alright, not causing any trouble, which is just excellent. Regardless, I suppose we should still keep an eye on them. We're a bit wary after that last incident, understandably so, I'd imagine. But yes, other than that minor anxiety right there, we're doing fairly well. Work in town is picking up once again. Trying to get some more of those windows installed. Getting them put into Jackie the Brewer's house, Jarrett's the Cook's house, as well as the Butcher's Mill over here. Not going too crazy with them. We went a bit overboard with Whiten's house, but he probably deserves it. So patient and all. Yeah, it's hardly a problem, really. Alongside outfitting these older houses with windows, we also have to put some new furniture in our new houses. They may be constructed, but they're not fully furnished yet. And aside from that, we also have to plan up some new structures. And we have to figure out a clever way to do it, too. We're gonna have to get a bit more intelligent about how we plan up our town if we want to make way for more pumpkins in the future. We're already taking up a whole lot of space here. Having a quick look up here to the north, it looks like Volate the Catling and Sirieri the Batling have entered town. These are those frequent thieves that visit us every season or so. Like clockwork, these guys. They never do anything. They just kind of pop up and are immediately chased off. <laughs> Terrible thieves. It's pretty endearing. See you next season, guys. Anyways, time to plan up some new structures. Well, as I was saying, if we have a look at Waddle Squash right now, we're taking up a big chunk of this area, aren't we? Of course, some of these existing buildings also serve dual purposes. They're not all houses. We have a library, a church, the mill, the barn, a crafting hall, and really all things considered the actual housing doesn't take up all that much space. Hmm, you know, at this point I am thinking that maybe we should start replacing some of our wood with stone. You know, we do have windows now, and wood is fine and all, it gets the job done, but there's really nothing quite like having a nice sturdy stone house to protect your pumpkins, you know? It insulates you real well, protects you from the elements, and of course we can use stone for a whole slew of other things too, so um, we're going to have to pick out a place for a quarry, I'm thinking. Down here in the southwest, we do have this small pit dugout, remember that? A few years back, Whiten came down here and mined out some stone for our colony, but since then it has definitely filled all the way up with water, and that's because we have a light aquifer in the area. A pretty pesky thing. Now, pumpkins aren't the best miners, shouldn't come as any surprise. So we probably shouldn't go digging all that far down. Um, not too sure how cute we should get with this whole thing, really. Maybe we should just clear out an area over here and start digging another open air quarry like this one, just like next to this one. And maybe we can even connect them and drain the water out into the larger area. Maybe shore up the walls a bit, prevent water from getting in, you know? It'd be really nice to get a decent supply of stone for once. And hell, maybe we can make the mines even deeper too. The only stone we've had access to is rock salt, which, while it does the trick, it can really dry a pumpkin out, you know? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll start with that. Clearing out the trees and digging out a small pit. In the meantime, I don't think it would hurt to at least contemplate an area for new housing. Over here by the chapel I think would be an excellent place. A nice natural avenue. We do have this pond in the way, but that's not going to be much of a problem. Yeah, we'll get some of these trees cleared out and then start planning up some smaller houses. That'd be a good idea. Glur, you have a lot of trees to cut down. Just uh, be careful this time. <laughs> Don't want to lose you, my friend. Now, having a look over here at Whiten, our leader, we can see the guy's carrying a log down to Glur's house. And we can also see that he's completely outfitted with steel armor now. Rin, our smith, was able to put together a full set for him. And as you can see, he's equipped with a steel mail shirt, his wild boar leather quiver, steel helm, steel musket, steel buckler, steel gauntlets, greaves, and high boots. And, uh, yes, a musket. We were able to trade the pumpkins for it last year. It's a fine weapon. Beautiful. And it menaces with spikes of green glass and cat bone. It must have been crafted in the city, I'd imagine. And also, if we take a peek into his quiver, you can see that he's equipped with bronze musket balls now. That's going to do a lot more damage than those wooden blunderbuss balls he was using. I think White in here has become a frightening force here in Waddle Squash, looking absolutely dapper in his shining steel armor, too. 
Though that being said, recently he's been outraged considering the scarcity of cages and chains. White in here, unsurprisingly, has been appointed as the sheriff of our community, and as such he would like a proper place to conduct business from. Can't really blame him to be sure, so that's another building we're going to have to put together for him. A sheriff's office. With a jail installed. We could put some cages and chains in there. And also I'm thinking we should make the sheriff's office a little bit bigger than it has to be. Just so that in the future we can also house other pumpkins in there as well. Maybe like a militia or something. I think that would be smart. And you know, just looking at Whiten's house here, I know we just renovated the thing, but maybe we can extend it farther. Down to the south or something. We could put a big area down there. Get a nice jail installed. And also maybe we can make like a shooting range or something out back. That'd be smart. Man, oh man, we have so much on our plate right now. <laughs> we're gonna start mining, we're gonna make a sheriff's office in here. We have all those new houses to plan out. And still windows. Plenty of windows left. Goodness gracious. Work never stops here in Waddle Squash. Having a look over here, just to the east of our chapel, we set up places for a couple more houses. Two of them, you can see they're still pretty big, frankly. But I think this is gonna be fine. We're gonna start squeezing everything in a little bit closer, so it shouldn't be a problem. We don't really wanna have to house people in very tiny houses. That wouldn't be right. And if you have a look down here, just to the south, next to the little pumpkin library, you can see a couple more houses. The same exact size. They're about the same exact size as those other two. I think this is going to be the standard house setup. It's going to be a ground floor and then the roof up top with like a little loft area. Plenty of space for a small family, certainly. And if we have a look back over here at Whiten's house, you can see we have a new sheriff's office built off the southern end of it, outfitted with some windows, of course. There's four windows in there. And it's not quite as big as we said it was going to be. There's a little porch out front with an awning above. And then you go in through the main door. There's a little office area. Got to get some furniture put in there. And then there's a back area as well where we're going to put some copper cages. There's going to be room for eight right now, but that'll be fine. I know we said we were going to make a room for like a militia or something like that, but eh, it's a future problem, I think. This will suffice for now. And now having a little look over here to the east, you can see these houses. These are the newer ones we made, and they all have windows installed. We're trying to keep it to five full windows per house, just so we don't run out of the things. But we're actually looking pretty darn good. These four houses down here are completely done. And if we look upstairs, they also have windows up there as well. We've got windows in the library, windows in the mill, windows in actually almost every single building now. Finally, right? Been playing with these poor pumpkins for far too long. But yeah, we're all set there. And we actually set up orders to make a whole slew of new ones too. So they're on the way. These newer houses we were working on are getting there. A couple of them have the entire ground floor done. Just need to throw some roofs up, as well as furniture and windows, of course. Oh, and actually, while we're pointing out some new furnishings, let's head back over here to the sheriff's office, which is now mostly completed. Just wanted to point out this nice new glass display case in the office, inside of which is the copper blunderbuss that was used to put down that human. I figured it deserved a place like this. But, uh, yeah, just a nice little touch. Anyways, having a look at the date, right now it's the 26th of Obsidian 408, late winter. Which means that, as usual, we are sailing right through this year, coming right up on our 7th. And I'm glad to see we had a peaceful year, too. Not an ounce of trouble, really. And we were plenty productive to boot. Ah uh, yes, here we are. Spring has arrived, and... oh darn. Well, that's a shame right there. It looks like our old turkey hen died of old age. Well, that's a shame. She gave us plenty of eggs in our years, so we certainly got our use out of her. Poor girl. We'll have to pick up another sometime. Looking over here, you can see that Volate the Catling Strangeling has arrived with a couple of their cronies. <laughs> They're marching straight through our trade depot that's filled with goods right now, just not taking a blessed thing. Really just terrible thieves. Well, you gotta hand it to them for trying, at least, I suppose. Maybe we should, like, leave some stuff out for them. I'm starting to feel bad. I don't know what they're looking for, is the thing. I mean, there's stuff all over the place, but it's not like we've got armed guards all over. I don't know. The Strangelings. But yes, besides that little nuisance there, everything is going swimmingly. Getting some more glass made, working on those houses. We'll have those four new houses done by year's end for sure. And by that point, we'll probably have started on four more. But yeah, it's not too thrilling, is it? Rather humdrum. Actually, something a little disturbing we've noticed recently is one of our new citizens. Uh, Scord, our wood burner. Not really in the best mood. And honestly, I suppose we couldn't blame the guy too much. We have Rin the Smith melting down metal objects day and night. We have Ansi the Asher pumping out ash. And of course there's Salman the Glassmaker trying to make glass. We need fuel for all that, charcoal. And Scord is the only wood burner in the entire village right now. And somehow he's been able to make enough where it hasn't been a problem. But yeah, I think that's what's got the guy down. I mean, he does have a very nice house now. It's just the fact that he can't enjoy it really. 
we'll have to find some downtime. Like, you know, I keep saying that, but then I keep also making new projects for us. So we'll get these four houses done. We'll try to finish up this next round of windows and then we'll call it quits for a while. How's that? It's going to be a struggle, I think. It's been fun seeing the town grow, but we deserve some rest, don't we? Can't have our poor pumpkins working themselves to death. That wouldn't be any good at all. But for the time being, work continues. Looking down here to the southwest, you can see our second hole we're digging out next to the first hole. Trying to get some stone, too, remember. Now, if you look down, this is only a very shallow pit right now. And if we dig down any further, we're going to expose water. So let's try to be smart here. That last pit worked so well that we're just going to kind of copy the design. Okay, we're digging down into the aquifer now. Oh, never mind, excuse me. This isn't the aquifer yet. The next level is digging down. Okay, and now we're at the aquifer. And what we're going to do is carve out these walls here. Try to get them replaced with wood. That will hopefully prevent water from coming in. This will work just fine. Just got to be sort of quick with it, pumpkins. Let's get a move on. Okay, here we go. Easy enough. The wall is in place, and I like to think of the wood as like... Maybe soaking up a little bit of water and expanding to fill the gaps. That's the reason water can't get through. Very clever, pumpkins. And now from here, we're going to continue downwards. Gotta get Hans the Mason over here. I'm sure the guy's glad to finally get some work around here. Admittedly, he hasn't had much to do. There we go, just like that. Now we just gotta get these walls shored up. No problem, really. And this next part here is where it's going to start to get interesting. This is the stone level. And I'm thinking we might want to just dig on past it, just so we can get away from the aquifer. I had suggested digging out a big cavern and then like draining that water out into it, but I think that may be more trouble than it's worth. If we could just get past the water using the same process that we have, um, yeah, it shouldn't be much of a problem. We'll see how that goes. Right, and we do want stone other than rock salt too. So yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. Hans is on the job. Okay, we've dug down to that level easy enough. And there we go. We've at least gotten to this level free of water, but now we have to continue down farther. And it is looking like down at this level here, there is no aquifer. Excellent, okay. So we'll just dig a tiny bit farther down, and then we can start mining proper. And having a look a little bit farther down, looks like we have more rock salt. But just a tiny bit farther down, we have some nice gabbro. That'll make for an excellent building material. Very good. We can finally start getting to work on some nice stone buildings. Just first, we're going to have to do a whole heck of a lot of mining. That being the case, maybe we should set up a little mining area over here. I know we already have a mason area set up in Han's house, but I guess we weren't planning on doing any actual serious mining. So yeah, we'll come up with something. Yeah, we'll just start off with a simple mine like this. Just slightly branching. Curious to see what else might be out there. It could well be that we have a source of metal right here in our area. That'd be very interesting, but I suppose time will tell. Uh-oh, looks like we have a bit of trouble up here. Scored the woodburner's not doing so well. Apparently his stress levels have increased a bit. The poor guy is now stumbling around obliviously. Yeah, um, real delicate pumpkin here. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have to take care of this guy. He obviously can't take as much as the other pumpkins can. So for now, I suppose we're gonna give him a little break. We're not gonna make him do anything else anymore, and we'll find someone else to start making charcoal. Poor fella. Yeah, head over to the bent limb, get yourself a drink, and just kind of relax a bit, Scored. I'll keep you updated. Oh, not like that, my friend. Okay, it looks like Scored followed my advice and went down to the bent limb here, listening to a story right now, but has begun throwing a tantrum. That is unfortunate. Uh, not too sure what happened there, but... Well, you could see everybody just ran out of the bent limb. Okay. It looks like Scored lashed out at our rattling poet, Mendulp, the one who lives here slugged them a couple times. Well, that's not excellent. Uh, Mendolp seems to be fine, but is on his way to report the crime. Probably to Whiten. Yeah, there he goes. He just let Whiten know what was happening. And I believe all these other visitors did too. Man, scored. That's not great. Well, I suppose it's good we got that jail set up, huh? Yeah, we can see over here on the right all the witnesses of the crime. Eight people reported it. Well, that's pretty damning, my friend. I guess we have to convict him of the crime. Sorry, Scored. Can't have that kind of behavior around here, though. Although, I'm not sure a jail's gonna help us in this situation. It looks like Whiten might have another punishment in mind. I guess instead of throwing him in jail, he's just gonna rough the guy up a bit. Let him know what's what or something. Not sure how that'll go. Let's see. Okay, alright. Yeah, definitely roughed him up. And now he's on his way to get a drink. Keeping the law's thirsty work. And having a look at the damage here, it looks like Whiten really roughed the guy up. Punched him a whole bunch, fracturing his legs, and, um, boy, that is rough. Caused Scord's right upper leg to collapse. 
But having a look at Scord, he seems to be in a pretty uh, decent state. He's walking around fine. These pumpkins are fairly durable, aren't they? Hmm. And once again, noted. Um, let's have a deeper look at our friend here. Right, he's been spending some time here in the Bent Limb, which apparently hasn't done much good for him. I want to see what, what does he want, you know? What does he want from life? Well, he's frustrated after being unable to take it easy for so long. Sure, that's frustrating, but you're taking it easy now, my friend. So, take it easy. Well, having a look, it says he would like to wander. And we can fulfill that easily by getting him to go outside and gather some plants. He just wants to be out of town, away from things for a bit, I guess. So, yeah, we could try to do that for him. Right at the current time, though, he's kind of just languishing in here. Couldn't really blame him, I suppose. Poor guy's just in a bad state right now. Doesn't really want to do anything. Even stuff he enjoys. Okay, here we go. We got him to go out, and now he's out gathering plants for a bit. Really hoping this does a trick. If it does, maybe we'll have to change his tasks a bit. Yeah, well, it's looking like he's satisfied at work now. It's better than nothing. What else could we do for him, though? Man, I don't know. Like, we can't make too many special accommodations for the guy. We have a lot of work to do, you know? Unfortunately, it seems like he was set off initially by having a specter explode next to him. The guy got covered with ectoplasm like Hayfar Butcher did. And I don't think it was great for his mental state. That being said, again, I'm not too sure what else we could do for him. Well, I guess we'll just leave him be for now and hope things get better. If they don't, then <laughs> I'm not sure what's gonna happen. We'll play it by ear. Well, regardless, we have to move on a bit now. Can't believe how fast we're moving through this year at this point. It really is something. At the current time, it's the 19th of Timber, 409. Late autumn. And soon it'll be winter and then spring once more. Having a look at our buildings, these new buildings here, the four new ones, are all set. Ground floors are all set. And upstairs, well, these ones aren't quite finished, but they're getting there. Just gotta put some windows in. But yeah, looking good. Four more houses down. We should plan up some new ones now. And you know, I think we'll put them back here, behind the church. There we go, we'll just do it like that. Two more houses right up here. And uh, how about right here, down to our south? We'll click up two more. And there we go, just like that. Two more houses, kind of tightly squeezed in there, but it should be plenty serviceable. Actually just realized this is right next to Scord's house, and we're completely blocking his windows now with a, with a new house. He's not gonna like that. Mm, we'll just get a couple more windows thrown in there. That'll make up for it. There you go, buddy. Yeah, he'll be fine. Oh, or, or alternatively, maybe he won't be fine at all. I've paused the game because there was an incident, once again, uh, having a look down here at the bent limb, you can see Scord laying on the ground, quite injured, sub-excellent. Let's try to suss out what happened here. I obviously wasn't paying very close attention at some point. Um, wow, yeah, there was some fighting recently. Mostly our strangelings and a bunch of our visitors at the bent limb. And I can't help but notice that Scord was involved, and I also can't help but think that maybe Scord was the catalyst for this. Okay, having a look here, up here you can see Scord punching the Rattling earlier, and then Whiten punching Scord a whole bunch. And then down here you can see Scord punching a bogey dancer, one of the visitors at the Bent Limb. The bogey then kicked Scord in the upper body, fracturing his body, and Scord just went kind of like nuts, swinging and missing at the bogey, at which point the bogey I guess had enough and punched off Scord's foot. <sighs> what a dummy, man. That is not excellent. Oh, and actually that bogey dancer who's up here by the brook, that's Arm Control Hate. The guy's on his way to report the crime to Whiten. Uh, you may remember Arm from our early days of the Bat Limb. One of our first visitors, that bogey dancer. Poor guy, yeah, he's not doing very well right now. I think one of his legs is broken. Did Scord really just end this man's career? That's horrendous. Not the kind of reputation we want for our humble little inn at all. Okay, well, we don't have a proper hospital set up at all. And so we're just going to make Scord's bedroom be a hospital for now. And you can see he's being brought there as we speak. And just kind of unceremoniously tossed in the corner here. <laughs> you could have put him in his bed, man. Uh, but yeah. So his foot is gone now. We'll have to get the guy a crutch. But boy, am I not feeling good about his future. Hang in there, my friend. Things really aren't that bad around here. Not anymore, anyways. Just gotta settle down. Enjoy the fruits of our labor a bit. Yeah, not good. Although, other than our friend Scord, things seem to be going swimmingly here in Waddle Squash. Nobody else seems to be doing badly at all, working or otherwise. At the moment, spring has just arrived, and we are just about to begin a fresh new year. A productive new year. Just, uh, here's hoping we all get through it in one piece, huh? That poor pumpkin. And on that note, I think we're going to start wrapping things up here with a bit of a behind-the-scenes look. 
I'll tell you what, I get super frustrated when dwarves, or in this case pumpkins, get stressed out like that, and there's no clear way to fix it. I will admit that Scord has had an awful lot of work lately, you know, all that wood burning there, he's been at it for a long long time, but like, all of the pumpkins have been hard at work, you know? I get he's an individual, I get he's got his own needs and wants and whatnot, he's got stuff going on, but like, you'd think having a whole bunch of downtime would fix that, right? You get to live in a town and go down to the inn, enjoy some songs and music and bogey dancing and food. We have plenty of food, plenty of drinks. Yeah, I don't know, just take a load off. It's, it's so hard to de-stress your citizens in this game sometimes, and it gets it gets a bit frustrating. Especially when, like, um, there's no clear way out of it, as I said. You know, a wood burner like Scored up there can have one rough year where he's got to work too much. And then be given all the time off in the world, all the food he can eat, all the drink he can drink, and there's just no way he's coming back from it. You know, that, that's kind of what it feels like. I have a distinct feeling that Scored is kind of doomed at this point, which I don't love. You know, I want to save the guy. I feel bad for him. I don't want to exile him. But I feel like exiling him might save his life in this situation. I just like, I don't know if the pumpkins would feel like exiling him, or... I feel like the pumpkins would want to try their best to help the guy, you know? Certainly exiling him's not going to help his mindset at all, right? At this point, he gets to just relax and sit around all day. How's it going to be when he goes back to the city? These pumpkins here are taking care of the guy. Yeah, I don't know. Just frustrating. Other than that, though, I'm trying to think what else to talk about. As for behind the scenes stuff... Oh, I did notice that one of our other pumpkins, one of our first pumpkins, Voli Eridine, the farmer, he's a bit stressed out too. Just started probably due to overworking so maybe we'll nip this one in the bud and like i know i said we try to get these buildings done and finish up some windows but maybe we'll cut that out early and just kind of like have a year of rest now or something tone things down a bit can't have people losing it we really 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 don't want to do that i, I don't want to <laughs> i don't want to see dead pumpkins man i love these pumpkins i hadn't even considered what we would do in the case of one dying but like it might be the case. <laughs> I don't really want to go down that route, but I guess we'll just see, huh? A pumpkin funeral. Boy, that's grim. <laughs> yeah, this series is changing. It's starting to get that smell of typical Dwarf Fortress, I'd say. Does that work? You guys still having fun with it? I'm still having fun with it. I'm curious to see what will happen in this fortress. Feels like a shame just to leave it off at this point, you know? I'm gonna keep it going, though. I'm gonna keep it going. Excited to see what happens in the future of Waddle Squash. And I hope you are, too. Anyways, my bearded bastard's gonna wrap things up for good now, I think. And I certainly hope to see you next time here in Waddle Squash. And until then, you bearded bastards. <laughs>